this uh, is a a new design of tailstock that I've uh, uh, built for the Tay Glaive and as you can see the uh, it's composed of two parts this is the sliding the sliding block with dovetails and the locking screw at the back the shaft has a key uh, along the length and that keeps the the sliding block uh, at a proper height and um, and then uh, you can leave it like that when you're not using the tailstock which gives you the whole length of the bed now if you're going to use the tailstock you slide this on and you lock that up in there and now you have a tailstock that slides right away along the bed of the lathe and over the top of the saddle it's activated by a rack and pinion which is the rack and pinion that came with the lathe um, I installed the power feed on the lathe which eliminated the use of the rack and pinion and so I've used the rack and pinion uh, on the tailstock to uh, to allow me to move the the quill back and forwards and enabling now enables me to use the whole bed uh, when I'm when I'm machining through uh, using a uh, uh, between centers and now the carriage travels right away underneath the, the tailstock um, this is uh, this design is um, is something that I saw on the Metal Master lathe. Um, <clears throat> uh, many years ago, um, and uh, I've more or less copied that that design. Um, the the two columns here. The two columns at the back are attached to two blocks, one at each end, and that in turn uh, has uh, engages with the dovetails on the back of the lathe. Um, the only thing was that I found that the, the the dovetails were not true with the bed, so I had to disassemble everything and remachine the dovetails uh, in parallel with the main bed. Uh, after doing that um, I decided well instead of coming up vertically I'd, I'd come up at an angle of 15 degrees and that would allow me if I ever had to use the spacers, the uh, one inch spacers uh, for the headstock um, then I would still have clearance uh, on the chuck. Um, if I'd have come up vertically then obviously it would have been closer to the chuck and that's the whole idea of this slot in the tailstock. I can move that out and when I move these pillars up uh, obviously the centre uh, at that point is is not complete uh, completely right so um, in moving it up at a at higher um, by one inch and uh, having an angle it means that this has to be reassembled or readjusted to be on center um, so that's the reason for the slot and the screw goes in here I'm going to I'm going to make a better screw with a nice knob on it so it's easy to to quickly um, uh, tighten and and remove so that's basically the design um, uh, this is a split a split uh, um, clamp 
uh, with a, uh, a scallop the same diameter as the as the shaft and it's sprung loaded so when you tighten it up it locks up the the quill and then you just slacken it off a bit and the, the quill is allowed to move uh, there see a little bit more there you go it's locked so um, uh, this is a key way in here um, to uh, take up any pressure any sideways pressure when you're drilling um, and it keeps the shaft uh, parallel um, this is a little oil cap that goes down and uh, lubricates the shaft um, that is about as much as I can tell you at this moment um, uh, it's got a nice long stroke uh, but the beauty is of course that the saddle can go right underneath the tailstock so it, it eliminates the problems with the original tailstock um, so um, I'm very happy with it I've used it and it works perfectly uh, it's uh, stable um, the stability is good um, here and um, uh, it's it's I'm I'm also able to adjust it if I need to um, by moving these pillars up or down they're locked in at the back there with set screws and the whole block runs in the uh, the whole, the two blocks are located in the dovetail at the back of the aluminium extrusion so that's it um, it's almost finished I've got some little uh, uh, chamfers to put around the edges and clean it up a bit and um, uh, it's I'm I'm really happy thank you